Hello everybody, my name is Farmer Phil and in today's video we are going plowing so we just have the 6290 that we done up one that we call Rose Tractor, Steady Eddie's Tractor so I'm driving it um, the plow is where we were plowing yesterday we were spreading slurry and plowing and we'll be continuing that today Father Phil and Bro they'll be spreading away there the other 6290 and the 6499 and the two two and a half thousand gallon tankers um, so I'll be tipping up in this but I have to bring up the water bowser with me so that the sprayers up there and Father Phil wants to spray off one of the fields that we're working on we're working in a I think it's a 60 acre block of ground in four fields or that so he wants the water brought up there so he can spray off one of the fields and he may go spraying when he gets the slurry done shouldn't take them all day to finish covering the ground I have a lot of ground to get ploughed as I'm way behind them and the reason the plough was up there and I was ploughing I was ploughing yesterday with the 6270 up there and it was giving me a little bit of trouble the front diff isn't engaging because there's a pipe burst so I need a new pipe on that so I couldn't use the diffs, it was very hard pull and we're also having an issue with a valve the, I know I can't think of the, the name of it um, it's a pressure, it's a release valve or uh, something that's in the back end and when you turn the plough it's like you keep pulling on the lever it's, it's pumping again itself and it leaves it with no power to pull the plough so I had to abandon it so we said we'd come back I have to put the front weights in this checker for water she's full of diesel and then tip up with the bowser and we get plowing but I have to do a little job in the calf feeders first just filling them up with alkaline and I have to get the 6270 needs to be put on that today her as there's pig slurry being drew in here today and we need to be able to pump it up into the store so yeah it's, it's all go but it's, it's like everything there's no shortage of work around here so anyways there you go rearrange these machinery check the feeders and then um, we get ready to go again might actually just pack this a bit closer for changing the weights be my life a little bit easier so now with the bows are on with our weights on all's checked all is ready to go so we bait on up to where we're going we get the plow on and we get some plowing done there's a lot of plowing i mean a lot of plowing i won't get all done today there's two days plowing up here at least but anyways we we'll bait on So with the plow on, Father Phil's just gone out to run our load of pink slurry. So there's actually just 48 acres here to be plowed. Um, no, it's not even 48, it's 48 acres of tillage here. I was wrong earlier. Uh, that's why I plowed yesterday. I'm not happy with how it's plowing at all. I seem to be able to match. I just, I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I'm missing. I'm not getting set on the plow that it's not plowing right. I can match. Two, two goes and then the third run I can't match it, it's just whatever side one side of the plow doesn't seem to be right I don't know I have to just trick with it but as you can see this field I'm in now isn't over big and it's a bit of a triangle so I'm just going to blitz through this and then I'll probably do a bit more filming when we go into the bigger fields where there's a bit more of a run under it but yeah we'll trick around we'll see what we can do and yeah it just wasn't happy with what I was plowing yesterday may just have been the 6270 and the settings in the arms because it was plowing better on this tractor the last time I was plowing the beans but still as some people pointed out still not great and I'll explain why later on but I just want to get this field finished because there's a heck of a lot of short runs going in there to get that done but we'll, we'll fly on through it and we'll pick up the camera later when we hopefully get it set a little bit better hopefully so just on the headlands well, let's just start. I'm on the headland run here, and I have found a few adjustments. We're going now a bit later, but I was just watching as uh, YouTube there. I was watching I from We from's last video or his latest video on his, his driven barn, how frustrating it can be. That is true, especially getting used to it. It takes a good bit of getting used to working out the sequence of events to turn it on and off because you have three things to do, but you're probably just on that. You probably wonder why Father Phil splashes the slurry instead of dribbling it while we're at this job as 
you see you, you get more nutrients out of the slurry or more nitrogen out of it when you dribble it over splashing and it's down to that fact that it's just that little bit more complicated and Father Phil always prefers to splash it over dribbling it when he doesn't have to. If he has to dribble it, he'll dribble it but when he doesn't have to dribble it and he has the choice, he'll splash it every day of the week. Just because it's just that little bit more finicky a little bit just just takes that little bit more but anyways, so that's just on that but um, yeah this side of the cow is down Get this headland finished, another two runs should finish it, then go down and plough the bottom headland and then we'll be heading on to the bigger fields and yeah we'll pick it up then and we'll show you the few bits I've done to the plough just to change it but still not right, still not ploughing right but I just, I'm, I'm at a loss with it at the minute now, anyways, I'll finish up this bit, finish up this field. So now that is that field ploughed, eventually, it's taken a while, just ploughing it the way I ploughed it into the triangle is, is really the most time consuming way of ploughing a triangle, but whatever, but um, well, also there's drains in the field and I wasn't to plough through the drain so I kind of had to plough two of them and around them, but it wasn't too bad, so that's that field finished now, uh, I'm not going to be sowing any of these fields for maybe a week, weather is, it's actually very cold, that you go to pop the hood in your oh, father Phil has some grub so we'll go over to him and I've got the tractor diesel's expensive uh, okay. always is gone bright now and it's actually ploughing a whole lot better and apps a lot lot better that field was nice and sandy too so it brightened the boards up fierce quick so how's that going? yeah it's alright much left to get. Well, we have enough just to do it, and nothing more. So. I couldn't plough through. No, you wouldn't. That bit, the the grass. So you probably want to run the sprayer, the boom of the sprayer out there, just to to give it round up. Yeah, so, just just on that, the sprayer is is there with the jewels on it. So you're going to spray off the field at the bottom where mini tilling. Yeah. And it may not be done today because there's showers. Yeah. So I might just go put the slurry on it, do it our Yeah. We're not new in that, you do it. No. But um, when it comes to we're not plow, we're not <coughs> spraying off the plow ground as the skimmers are doing actually a fantastic job. Are you getting the wet down. skim down? And it's to keep down the trash. Normally, we spray we spray off everything, especially here because there's a big problem with meadow. Isn't the meadow grass? Meadow grass, yeah. Meadow but um, no, once hopefully the, the skimmers separate right now and keep keep that down. I'm trying to save save a few pounds. Save a few pounds. Cost cut to see save a few pound. So how much is round up? nearly 300 euros for 20 litres now. Yeah, and 20 litres does four eight hectares. No, it does eight hectares. Eight hectares. Yeah, when you're no. just on spray it off. Yeah. On stubble, not for grassland. Oh, now. grassland takes more. Oh, oh, grassland to be four hectares. Yeah. But on stubble, you'd only be using the minimum, the bare minimum. Yeah. Just to take it. But it, it, the grass, it's no harm. It's not any harm. No. I don't think we may be proved wrong. <coughs> well, we'll have to I wouldn't be the first time. No, we'll have to, we'll have to see. <coughs> you could well, what was the roundup last year's? Round of last year was about 90 euro. 90 euro, and it's now nearly 300. Uh, near enough, yeah. yeah. Depends on where, and depends on the type. If you get the real strong, the bi-active high active, or high active, the really, yeah. really strong stuff, that's up near five. Yeah. It's just, just mad. Mad. You don't want to do it. I am going to yeah, put down the camera a little bit, but that's, yeah, that's that's why we're spraying off anything we're mini tilling and anything that's being ploughed is Fert not. Fertilizer is a thousand a ton yeah. average. Diesel is 130 a litre. Yeah. And Roundup is. 300 euros for 20 litres yeah and we think we're going to make money <laughs> and with that, that, that that's without putting the seed in the ground that's without putting that in, that's and that's without, without putting all any sprays on oh, it oh excuse me uh, the sprays are up about 15 percent yeah so seed isn't up too much no it's a little bit dearer but not much it's not, not much not yeah. nothing but <coughs> going forward i know it's a challenge yeah Anyways. surely yeah, a bit, and we'll keep keep motor and line plan out there next. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. That's grand. So, you can see Father Phil splashing away out there. But this field here, they've already spread. And this field last year, you may remember, we done the filming with applied and their blow down the combine and that. We also this is the field that we we try we done a bit of a trial on with Nova Q and their products, and we mini till it. 
This end of the field did not grow very well and that was because it was quite wet so we put in shores into it and also the field in general didn't yield that well and we think compaction was a bit of an issue. So we're going with the plow this year and seeing hopefully it'll make a bit a good difference to it. But we won't really know. We also got heaps of dung on it as you, you know and the pig slurry now hopefully will replace the sown manure. Hopefully. So anyway, we're gonna start along this big headland here. And yeah, we'll see how this goes and how it plows. I'll get a bit done. I might stick up the drone later when I'm in this one because the tractor this tractor does look also well on the plow. Very very nice. Very very nice. So I'll try and get the drone up if I get a chance, especially when they're out there, but it is quite windy at the minute and it is cold. So wouldn't be just maybe the best for doing that, but eh, whatever. Diff lock. The only lights I have is the diff lock, the four wheel drive isn't lighting up, nor is 1A. 1B is not. Need to change, replace a few lights as soon as we get plowing. I think I'll put down the camera if I can get this run done right. Not too bad there now. So, plowing away here, so I can show you what's happening with the plow. So, at the minute, this side of the plow is turning the ground fierce well. See that what I mean by turning fierce well is every furrow is matching every furrow and then this furrow which fills into the furrow that I'm driving in is matching perfect. That is just spot on. That couldn't be better. Could not be better. Well happy with that side. I get to the headland and I flip it and I go down. I'll show you what's going on. So I have the cow flipped now and you can see my two middle furrows are matching. That fur is not filling the fur that I've put out on. The next fur isn't matching that one, and then the last fur isn't matching. So there, there's, there's none. The only matching there is the two middle furs, which seem to be going deeper than the front and the back fur. Now that front fur there was the one that was giving me the most trouble yesterday. I could hardly get it to fill the fur behind the 6270, but it's not too bad today. I adjusted the mold board, so you can see in the back of the mold board there's a bar and that kind of pushes the mold board out so I threw that out to the last and that bar is slightly bent and that could be what's causing that not to push enough clay over to fill, to fill the gap I think that's what's wrong, it's just that that bar is bent and even though I screwed it out to the last, which has improved it and every now and again you can see that it's not too bad, it's not turning it too bad there now but it's just, it's not good enough I don't know why my two middle furrows are so bad, they are so going so deep and then the last fur, I, I, I don't know why my furrows across the board aren't matching because the only real adjustments you have are in your first and your last fur you have no real adjustments on the middle furrows and I don't know what that we're going across now with the plow by uh, a match plow uh, practicing so that's why it's turning a bit more loose of itself but I just I, I don't know I'm at, I'm at a loss now I'm very confident I know what's wrong with that front for that bar it's slightly it's not mad bent but it's just slightly bent which is keeping it pulled back that bit I did improve when I pushed it out but just not enough at the same time so we've just gone out with that bit as well before. I just don't know. I don't know. I'm quite annoyed now because I've one side doing a lovely job and I've the other side just not doing. So I think I'll chat to Uncle Liam when I go home to see what he thinks. He'd be the our bow man you could say. He's kind of all his life bowing. Not much he doesn't know about. Now you can see there he's doing a much nicer job. I just I don't know. But even though it's not the taste of their flowing, the, the hara will still level it all out and it, it won't make much of a difference to be honest. And that's after going completely proper that way. Damn it. Yeah, that's what happens, trying to avoid the drain there and I'm after going completely proper. When you're plowing you like to do nice plowing, but that's just getting the plow. Look, that's just what it is. Yeah, 
Okay, we'll another breath done. You may see the ground there. And no, that's not fertilizer. It is hailing at the minute. Just kind of goes to show how cold it is. I actually got hail on the seat. Oh, getting wet. But yeah, there's a passing shower of hail. Just goes to show how cold it is. And what is it, the 7th of April? 8th of April. 8th of April. There's to be a hard frost tonight, so kind of, in a way, it's not the worst thing that we don't have that much sun because hard weather is hard on the crops, especially frost. There's supposed to be minus three tonight. There's no harm, we don't have anything sowed really, there, except for the beans, but our beans are still, still aren't poking above the ground yet. But yeah, good cold weather. But hopefully it settles down into next week and we're able to get a good bit of this plant. So there's a stone went into the third furrow there and it just jams it and then it makes the spring lift up and it doesn't pop the cloud down right that's how you see that just then it up and back took it over yeah, we keep rooting away i think they're around halfway through the big field out there so yeah it's just slow going when i get out another i might put up the drone for a bit when i see them coming into the yard or that it's just plowing is is a slow slow job the drone up there and got a nice bit of fudge of me plowing but I left it up for a while to see could I get the tankers coming trying to gauge it that they were going to come back when I'd have the drone up and I just see bro coming across the road there I don't know can you see him you may just see the orange of the tanker and of course the battery run out on the drone I have it the drones there I didn't lose it or that I got it back but as you can tell I didn't get any footage of him spreading and uh, of course I brought one battery so yeah a little bit annoyed about that but what can you do? Plowing away here and it was about that halfway mark maybe a bit more um, if you're wondering that structure or area in the middle of the field that well from what I was told it was a laundrette or laundry or, or something along them lines belonging to a big house that was over that way like one of the big big old estately houses that was that was something to do with it, a laundry or laundrette or something like that. Anyways, there's a well in it, and that's that's why that's there. Yeah. So anyways, look, we're plowing away. I have to work around what's there, and yeah. I as you can see, I took off the jumper. Oh, I got out to get the drone. Didn't realize just how cold it is. It's nice and warm in the tractor, even with the back window open, but it's still pretty cold outside. I am leaving a big headland. Because most of you would know I normally plough up to the hedge and that's that's how I was unclean taught me to plough plough right up to the hedge sure as small as a headland as possible but in college we were always told plough to where your first tram line is from the hedge so that you have a nice smooth run round with the sprayer and I know people have said that in the comments before why don't you do that so I said I'd give it a try this year and on the biggest fields and um, see how it goes. Just I'm supposed to be curious to see is it going to be that much better? So I don't know. We have a 24 meter sprayer, so I need to keep 12 plus one. I need to keep about 13 meters from the hedge. So I don't know whether I am or not. I'm working off two widths of the tanker that the spread out from the the hedge. That's what I'm kind of working on. 
as my guideline. Normally you'd run a scribe line, but I said I'd just work off their, their spread in width and hopefully that's enough. Hopefully that's enough. So anyways, I keep baiting that. Father Phil and bro just finished spreading slurry and Father Phil's going to plough on uh, Liv wants to hand the home with the calves Anyways, so that's the ploughing um, We might get another bit of film tomorrow because there's still the biggest end of it is out there still to be ploughed and um, one of the things uh, people, uh, people outside of Ireland, well especially in America there doesn't seem to be a lot of ploughing done in America but the reason we plough is to reduce compaction so if you can kind of see the level of the ground that's unploughed and the level that's ploughed it kind of breaks up the soil it fluffs it up and our ground the ground that we have in this part of the world and in longford is mostly heavy clay so it's it's prone to compaction and ploughing is one of the best ways of breaking up that compaction you can see how the likes of that how it kind of sticks together now it is that a little bit damp but it's just heavy clay it all just likes to stick together and the compaction affects how well the seeds and the plants can develop the root structure and spread out and the transfer of nutrients if i can remember rightly so anyways i'm gonna be on home in the 99 give live a hand and we'll be back up here again tomorrow plowing so yeah uh, be on home So now it is the second day. So Robert and Eric are going off. They're finished. They're finished putting out here, but left the tankers here. They're going back to the piggery to pick up the pipe and get the 49th and 50th load on some grassland in Valley Matten. But Father Phil, after we left him last night, he broke the plough. That plate there, which works to turn the plough, Ramazan, on, split. So he had to race to Wexford. This morning to get a new piece because it is a Saturday we wouldn't have had it till Tuesday and we need to get the slurry ploughed in down to roaches, roaches. so where it split just there along the balls it split just actually it's a weak spot it split along that track that track there right across yeah and snap these two balls and just hooking them off not impressed now no and I wouldn't mind but the one that broke we only put on in September the 20 4th of September. 26th of September. 26th of September. So really that shouldn't have happened and but we don't know. We we, we, we don't we don't we, we drop back down the piece that was broke to, to wanted the back to have a look at it. Yeah. So. But it do, it did look like there was it didn't look right. The casting didn't look right when it had split. Anyways, I well, have two one. One to get out. One to get out. Only this could be hard drilling now because they're twelve point nine bolts. But we have to get this fixed first. But they are gone to pick up the pipe from the piggery and draw a two load to a farm we have just outside of Ballymatten. Just to bring, bring, grassland. bring a grassland to bring it on when they're going home. And then you're going spraying. I go spraying because it's a nice day. It's a love a smashing day, not too much not too much wind. It's warmed up quite a bit, so Father Phil's gonna spray off the field ruby mini till in here because you can't plow it just to I know at the seagulls. Oh easy outs. Yes. Midwest. Midwest Electrical. Where we got all the tools for the workshop. They sent on another few bits for you. A few goodies. A few goodies. More easy outs. So bits for me. Yeah, they're not much use to you, are they? No. So try and get the easy out. But anyways, then Father Phil's going on to spray off uh, a silage field and we're going to be putting in red clover into it. But we'll talk about more about that later on when we get to sowing it. And also you're going on then to spray the beans and yeah, spray well, the I'm winter wheat. Spray beans and have a, a first spray on the winter wheat for growth regulator. Yeah. Needs to be done. So. I see that this comes out now. Next size up. Too small. Another one for you from Midwest Electrical. Oh, oh yeah, and this is 36 socket. 36 socket. You don't see them everywhere in a half inch. No. 
they normally be on an inch, wouldn't they? Right, right there, right there. I don't know. Had her fill again the sprayers. So I started then plowing out the headland here. Father Phil didn't plow them all, he just went and got started in the next one, said he'd leave the headlands to me. So, anyways, I'm gonna fire up the drone when Father Phil gets the sprayer out into the bottom field to do that, and we'll see the sprayer in action because I know there's never that much done with the sprayer or shown about the sprayer or the uh, video end of the sprayer done because I don't do any spraying. Father Phil does all that. So I'm going to plow these headlands and we'll fire up the drone when I see Father Phil head for the field. So, we've just finished finished plowing the other field and Father Phil has just finished spraying. He's heading off to spray off the bit. It's four and a half acres of silage ground we're going to put red clover in. And um, yeah, we'll do a whole thing on that when we get that far to do in that way of work. But um, just driving across to where he started and the plow broke on him yesterday. It broke on him when he was turning it, as it would. It didn't break in the ground. But he also scribed out the headland where his tram line is for the sprayer at that 24 meters so that uh, it's basically what I said earlier so yeah we get lined up here and we start plowing so just a kind of an update on how painfully slow plowing is I was just at the gap which is just at that third tree up there two hours ago so in two hours I plowed that much and I gotta go all the way over there and the runs only get longer too I'm still in, relatively speaking, short enough runs. And no, my plowing isn't straight. So yeah. The plowing is painfully slow. A lot of furrows between here and that fire hedge. So, I'm plowing away and just keeping an eye on my points as they are. Starting to wear down quite a bit. And it's time to change them. As you can see on this side, it start, it's worn nearly in line with the shear, which is that piece there, that's the point. So that's the piece that gets the most wear. So it's just wore in line with that. So now I'm starting to wear off more the shin or the shear than I should be. So I'm going to turn the points because the point is double sided. There's a new end there. So it's just pull it off, turn around, pull it back on. The Jeep is in the yard and it has the big gun in it and all the sockets. So I'll just tip in and we'll go change the points. Biggest thing when doing this job is don't use your finger, keep the bolt up, cut the hands in, use something that won't. You can see that hand versus that hand. That's how much is wore off. It's a lot of metal <laughs> that's wore off. So anyways, 
We'll blitz this and we get these all turned. And now, that's the points all turned. So we have a good edge there now and we have a good bit of wearing to do because they were put on it for all the plowing that was done in the autumn. It's plowed everything. And they've plowed about 50 acres-ish. Just off the top of my head, 50, 60 acres is what the points have plowed and then we turned them. So now it's time to plow away again. But the biggest thing when you turn your points if you were in fairly rocky or stony ground, I mean like bowing up stones, not just sandy stones, you, you always, I always find that you may be a bit prone to snapping the points off or yeah, just breaking the points off. So you always try and avoid doing it when you're in that kind of ground. This ground is fine, there's very, very few stones coming up on it. But yeah, you'd always, when you have new points on or turning your points, you'd always go for plowing your, your easier soil because you're just that bit prone to them breaking. Anyways, we get back plowing and yeah, we knock another few hours out. I'd say now in about two hours time I should be hitting this shore here, which is the longest shore going up into a wet spot up there. But um, yeah, it's about, about two hours, four hours time that's where I should be. And if that's as far as I am and it's gone dark, I don't think I'll be staying up all night to plow because I won't have it done till 12 o'clock tomorrow morning so yeah anyways we'll get back plowing and we'll see how we go on so plowing away as always it's very strange when you're beside the road with the lights so it feels weird but um the longest run in the field has been done there now it's like no light light so that's the longest run so the field kind of coming an angle this way and now it goes back that way so this is the longest run so, yeah, not much else has happened. Except for I watched the that has gone in, into the road, and it's into the road. Savage lace off these lights on Paul and Absolutely savage. It is. At the other end, I'm also just hitting that big shore, or the longer shore that goes, the further shore that goes out into the field. And if I remember rightly, I said five hours ago, I'd be four hours doing it. So it's about five o'clock, I think, that when I changed the points, I said it'd be four hours. It's now 10 o'clock. So I might do another half an hour, and then I think I'll go home. I'm not gonna get this field finished tonight. To finish this field tonight, probably gonna to take me another five hours. Five hours from now is like, was it three o'clock in the morning? It's a bit late staying up to finish the plowing so I'll just come back Monday or get broke to go plowing Monday or whatever we get done another day it's just it's a bit too long anyways yeah so keep plowing away 